Many people want to know if they are on track to meet their retirement goals, if they are putting away enough money. But rarely do people think about the risks that could totally derail their golden years. In today's video, I want to share three great retirement risks that you will encounter and what you can do to combat them. Hey, how's it going? If you're new to this channel, thanks for dropping by. My name is Thomas C. Chen. We have the most Vancouver life insurance and retirement five-star Google reviews. And this channel is to help Canadians build tax-free wealth for their retirement and to protect you and your family using solutions that Canadian banks don't want you to know about. So enjoy what I have for you and let's get started. The first retirement risk I'm going to talk about is longevity risk. Longevity risk is not just about how old you are on the driver license or how much you have on the balance sheet. It's about the quality of life. It's about that peace of mind if you have enough money to maintain that quality of life in your golden years. With modern medicine and our just general knowledge about health, we have a very high chance that we will live longer than we expected. According to research on average, people also live about 6 years longer than what they expected. And the most recent Statistic Canada data shows that the average Canadian is living until the age of 82 and that's only going to increase to 85, 90 or even 100 years old by the time you retire. So let's pretend you're going to retire at 65 and you kick the bucket at age 95. That's a 30 year of you relying on savings and it could be very terrifying where you spend majority of the money in the go-go years and end up outliving your money then you have to cut back on your spending which can be really difficult especially if you're used to live in a certain lifestyle. Vice versa, you don't spend a dime and keep saving, saving, saving and by the time you're in your 80s and realize you have enough money to spend, it's too late and we are almost at the no-go stage. Okay, so longevity is a huge risk that you've got to manage for, but how do you do that? First, let's figure out how much we'll spend first. I know a lot of studies say when we retire, we'll spend 30% less. But let me ask you this, when do you spend the most money? Weekday or weekend? When you retire, every day is your Sunday. So I rather want to be on the safe side and say you'll probably spend the same amount of money when you retire. Let's say during retirement, you'll spend $5,000 per month and that's $60,000 per year and apply the 4% rule. The 4% rule is using only 4% of your saving each year and to have a 95% chances of not running out of money. This rule is based on historical data and has been shown to be a more reliable guidelines for retirees. With the 4% rule, individuals can plan to live comfortably in retirement without fear of outliving their money. Now of course, this is easier said than done. You have to make sure you can live comfortably on that 4%. In order to figure out how much someone can safely withdraw every year, simply take 4% of the total retirement savings in the first year, then calculate what the amount would be in the subsequent year. So using the example above, if we have $1.5 million save up, we can withdraw $60,000 in the first year. In the subsequent years, the amount withdrawn is adjusted for inflation by increasing the 4% withdrawal by the consumer price index which measures changes in price over time. This can be calculated by taking 4% of one's original retirement savings and then add the CPI for that year. So if the CPI is 3%, they will withdraw 4% plus 3% equals 7% of the original savings in the second year. This accounts for the margin of safety. However, the 4% rule is not a 100% guarantee of success because we still have another two risks we need to explore. The second retirement risk we need to look into is taxes. Taxes are often a person's single greatest expense, so by significantly reducing them, you can save a lot of money for your retirement. A survey done by CIBC shows that three quarters of Canadians worry about not having enough money for retirement, but they don't understand how retirement income is taxed. Just like our employment income, most retirement income is taxable. This includes government benefits such as Canadian Pension Plan, always security, pensions from your company is also taxable. And last but not least, RSP, one of the major accounts that Canadians use for retirement and yet pay the most taxes. Because one being all withdrawn is 100% taxable and you are forced to take it out after the age of 71. And lastly, if you pass away before you use all the RSP, then the government will come in and easily take 50% away from the account because now the entire RSP needs to withdraw as your last year income and pay the final tax. 
People often ask how can they save more taxes when they work or invest. But my question to you is, what's your tax strategy during retirement? When it comes to taxes, your planning should start way before retirement. In my opinion, I will say 10 years before you actually retire. That way, you have time to reposition your portfolio. For example, RSP is great, but we might need to stop doing it years before you retire and to invest elsewhere. If your multiple investment property, is it worth to sell them one by one accordingly or wait until the day you pass away and government sell all at once for you? Or for CPP, is it worth to take it out earlier or later? For OAS, same thing as well, because that's OAS clawback when our annual income is more than $82,000. Apart from utilizing the usual tax saving accounts like an RSP or tax free saving, one way to save on taxes is through income splitting. Income splitting in Canada is the practice of having the higher earning spouse transfer a part of the income to the lower earning spouse so they end up with similar income levels for tax purpose. One thing to keep in mind is if you share a certain percentage one year, you don't have to share the same percentage the next year and that gives you flexibility. However, before you deploy this tactic, remember to get independent tax advice on splitting income to make sure you do it right. In addition, a life insurance policy can save you a lot of headache for estate planning. It's penny to dollar investment that can skip probates, completely tax free and full privacy meaning the family can get the money right away and pay off all the expenses and the final tax bills. Hey, sorry for the interruption, but I got a special announcement for you. I will be hosting a live webinar next month where I'm going to talk about tax efficient strategy, what can we do during this market downturn, and how to boost your wealth this year. So many goodies here that you don't want to miss it. There should be a link below where you can check out the details and I only offer it to the first 100 people. So first come first serve base, make sure to check it out. All right, back to the video. All right, the last retirement risk is about the market risk. Have you considered what might happen to your retirement plans if you enter recessions in the retirement year? Have you considered the risk involved with making changes to your portfolio in response to bad economic news or market events? Market volatility simply means that the financial market often make large swings, both up and down. In really good times, financial markets can increase sometimes by 20 or 30%, and in really bad times, it can decrease by just as much. 2022 is a perfect example. US stock is down 20%, Canadian stock market is down 9%, and real estate market is down 10%. We know that market will come back eventually, but would you be concerned and stressed out while you're in the roller coaster ride? Also, say you're going to rely on your retirement portfolio for the next 20 years. That means it's very likelihood you're going to hit another market downturn. So that will put an extra stress on the portfolio. And as you're near retirement or during the retirement, you have less time to recover from a large drop in the reinvestment, meaning you can quickly see your hard earning evaporate. All right, so how do you solve those? It's best to take a ladder risk approach. And what's that? You invest in high risk stocks and index when you're in your 20s or 30s, such as tech and growth companies. And then when you reach to your 40s and 50s, you slowly decrease your risky stock allocation to be a more stable blue chip portfolio so that you can weather the fluctuations. The theme is instead of focus on asset accumulation in your retired years, we now shift the focus to cash flow accumulation. Next is to diversify the retirement portfolio. As my previous video mentioned, it's not about investing different stocks or different countries. It's acquiring different asset classes. In my opinion, we should have five different asset classes, cash, paper assets, real estate, life insurance, and commodities. I'm not going to talk too much about it as I mentioned it before. Feel free to check out my previous videos and there should be a link at the top corner. And please talk to your financial advisor before implementing this strategy. Each person is slightly different and what type of strategy they use will depend on their current situation and their retirement goals. All right, that's it for this week. Hopefully I've given you plenty to think about. You have one takeaway from this video, it's not always about trying to maximize the amount of money you have for retirement. Sometimes it's just as important to think about how you can protect the money you already have. This is Thomas. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.